Hello and welcome to the next of our new play Hero Guide videos. This time looking at KO, armed and dangerous. His name is a pun. He lost his arm, so he's armed rather than too armed. In this series of videos, we look at all the heroes in the game from a new player perspective, asking the question about how accessible their core mechanics are, how accessible the hero is overall, and how much depth they have for new players to learn and grow with them. After that, we give every category a score out of five, and we give an overall score out of five for new players. This video does not contain deck text, though it does talk about strategy and key cards for each hero. Decks are just changing too often, so it doesn't make sense to include them in these videos, as they're a little bit more evergreen and updated a little bit less frequently than decks. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, you can like and subscribe to my channel, Steel First Speaks. There is also a playlist with the other videos in this series. Uh, they should all be there, but as we say, we're working through them. Some of them are being updated, some of them are being put in. So this will be a live library, but it may not be completely update right at this exact moment, but you can go and have a look at it. So, KO Armed and Dangerous, he's a brute and he is here to fight. But what is his story? What do we know about him? Chaos journey has spiralled into a whirlwind of madness and brutal chaos. Each life or death confrontation has taken its toll, stripping away both flesh and bone, forging him into a wild, unrelenting beast. Hunting a formidable creature in the Badlands, Ko found himself on the brink of death after a fierce clash with the prized prey. The deathmatch arena, seizing the opportunity, took him captive. Now from within the confinements of the arena's cages, Ko has emerged a crazed, savaged force unleashed to challenge and test the metal of the arena's finest fighters. In every deadly contest, Ko exhibits the fierce tenacity of a bloodthirsty, feral animal. Despite being repeatedly on the back foot, he rises from defeat, each setback fueling his crazed savagery and rendering him even more dangerous. Ko has become the underdog of the arena, a fighter perpetually at a disadvantage, yet one who refuses to surrender, forever embracing the chaos and the brutal unpredictability of his existence. Now, if that sounded like there was a lot of randomness going on in Ko, that is because he is a brute, and brute life is, unfortunately, the random life. So the brute class focuses on dice rolling, discarding random cards, and trying to get certain criteria filled to get huge benefits. For example, the iconic brute feet piece of equi um, equipment rolls a dice and you gain half the number of action points rounded down now obviously if you roll anything above a two you're fine because you'll get at least one action point back but if you already roll a one you will get zero action points and forfeit your entire turn so ko armed and dangerous he is a brute hero with four intellect and 40 health which is the benchmark for all heroes in flesh and blood he has lost an arm so he only has one weapon zone he can only equip one one-handed weapon which will often be the mandible claws that he has on here but there is some flexibility to make other choices based on what's going on attack action cards you own get plus one when they're in any zone other than the combat chain now wait till you ask why does it matter if they're buffed if they're not on the combat chain? His second ability says, the first time you discard a card with six or more power during each of your action phases, create a might token. So instantly with his first ability, any card that's discarded which has five or more power will trigger this six or more power condition and give you a might token. Might is a token that gets destroyed at the start of your turn. It is an aura. And it says, at the start of your turn, destroy this and give your first attack or your next attack plus one power so it was a free plus one on your next turn every time you meet this condition which does add up quite quickly so ko is about drawing and discarding cards this can be seen in one of his iconic cards bear fangs when there's attacks you draw and discard a random card from your hand if a card with six or more power is discarded this way get two power now this does seem a bit intimidating at first to people but what they don't realize is that by blocking and controlling your hand you can often control which card is discarded for example if you have bear fangs a six power card and a five power card in your hand you are likely going to be blocking with the five power card on your opponent's turn playing the bear fangs and then trying to discard the six power card. Now, of course, there is a random element to this. You don't know what the top card of your deck is going to be. So you are kind of gambling a little bit. 
or you know if you have no cards left in your hand it is entirely a gamble so you can either stack it so you have a 50 50 chance of dest destroying a six cost card or you can trust in the ratios of your decks and brute cards often have upwards of 50 to 60 percent um cards with six or more power just to give them high chances of hitting those ratios so then this would turn into a two for eight however you'll notice one other thing which is common amongst brutes is that this card does not in fact block it exchanges an above rate power value for the inability to block but that does mean that occasionally you'll be playing against an opponent who prevents attacks with on-hit effects that you cannot deal with. However, Brute's answer to that is not to, you know, worry too much about blocking those attacks, but instead to build up to power turns and prevent too much damage for his opponents to deal with whenever possible. And that can be seen in the next part of the card, which is a common combo card played in most Brute decks called Blood Rush Bellow. It costs one. As an additional cost to play this, you discard a random card from your hand. So normally you'd start this turn by pitching the card in your hand that isn't a six power to pay for this, and then discarding one of the remaining cards, which assumedly is a six power, so you set it up so it's guaranteed. Your brute attacks gain plus two this turn. Fantastic. If the discard card has six or more power, draw two cards and it gains go again. So you have to make sure you discard a six power card with Blood Rush Bellow, even if it's worth waiting a turn to set it up, because if it does not have six or more power, it doesn't gain go again, and unless you have extra, extra action points from somewhere, your turn ends. However, if your turn does not end, then you have go again, Bear Fangs potentially coming in for 10, your weapon coming in for an additional plus two, maybe for five, and any other sources of go again can also turn into, you know, extra damage on that combat chain. So Blood Rush Bellow turns, easily putting up an upwards of 18, 24 damage, but really you do have to do the setup, you do have to make sure the random goes in your favour. A lot of what Brute is about is making sure the random goes in your favour. There are also payoffs for discarding cards. An example is Beast Within, which comes from Crucible of War. On the surface, it's a 3-cost, 6-power attack with no no text that affects the attack itself when it's played but if it is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the combat chain so if you don't play it to attack but you discard it instead you banish it uh, you banish the top card of your deck and you lose one life if the top card of your deck has six or more power it goes into your hand otherwise you repeat this process now this has killed people who have banished five or six cards without hitting a six power card but typically you banish one or two you find a six power card and then you inevitably draw that card so what Beast Within does, combined with other discard effects, is fill up your hand, back up, and there are other cards like Berserk, for example, that do similar things, basically rewarding you for setting up big turns with Blood Rush Bellow and dealing lots of damage, as well as providing consistent buffs and aggression. And sure, some turns you're not going to be able to block, but you're going to reward those the your opponent for attacking you and getting free damage with huge damage in return. However... So let's look at the mechanics. Plus six power is fine. Brute have a huge density of plus six power cards, though it does some force you into running no block cards. KO especially has much less trouble with plus six power cards than other Brutes. He has a huge amount of access to both six power cards and resources. So that's not really in his against him. However, I would say discard at random as an additional cost is not a very accessible mechanic for new players. So it kind of feels like that is, you know not getting in points as why all the reasons he's lost a lot of points is that that is something that is easy to play around sorry not easy to play around and it's also something that is very possible to have a lot of feels bad moments on where you miss plan you discard the random card and your turn just doesn't go the way you want it to which can be quite negative for new players that being said some people might turn this two into a five because they're sitting there thinking gambling is fantastic i want to gamble all the time brute life and there is a group of people in flesh and blood who are on that brute life and are doing that so if hearing discard at random but i get to beat the crap out of my opponent sounds good to you then maybe you should consider picking up the brute and ignoring my mechanics score here um he also has a lot of non-block cards which does make it more difficult to play around on hits they also don't have necessarily a lot of armor which makes the non-block cards even more punishing so that definitely reduces points and then also the dice rolling and random effects this isn't hard to understand mechanically, but when to rely on it and when to push through and push ahead is a bit more tricky. So for new players, that does lower the mechanic score just because understanding when to rely on random and when random isn't that random and, you know, when you have that good chance to do and stuff like that is all kind of next level of play so that leaves him with two stars on mechanics just because the additional random costs and the randomness nature of it does make it a bit harder to learn as a new player and i feel like that doesn't make it particularly mechanically friendly on accessibility 
of course, a lot of these things are mirrored as well because the, the accessibility is very, very tied to his mechanics for this hero. Um, random discards can be incredibly punishing. Um, blocks are difficult to set up with the whole hand, especially when you need your hand, you know, to pay for the random discard effects or you can't do what you want to do. Like you can't, you might have to keep three cards just to pitch one, play the other one and discard the third one, which means you're taking a lot of damage. Um, and he also has this potential for self-bricking where he accidentally does something that he didn't intend or he accidentally discards the wrong card and then he can't play out the turn that he wants. And regularly I've seen Brute players say, you know, oh, if this had gone this way I would have dealt 18 damage uh, but because it went this way I dealt 6. And I think that's something that's very possible going to feel bad for new players and I think it increases the difficulty of saying he's very accessible to new players because I feel like that's going to feel kind of bad. It's not to say that new players can't learn how to play Brute, but I've, or KO specifically, but I feel like they will struggle more than with other heroes we've seen. Moving on then to Depth. There are, however, large payouts available. We've seen Blood Rush Bellows, there's Berserking, there's um, Pummel, there's, um, there's other cards, you know, discard a card but get plus bonuses, there's big attacks, there's power to be found in the randomness, there's Rolling Scab Skins, which is the name of the Brute, boots and getting three action points instead of having one and using those to deal damage there are loads of payoffs available for the randomness and when you learn how to play around the random and to set it up in ways that means it's less random by pitching the right cards blocking with the right card etc etc the payoffs do become easier to achieve which gives him a better depth score he has a high ceiling for both skill and luck so the skill means that you're not randomly going in 50 50 every time you are being able to set things up and the luck of course does mean that Sometimes you're going to roll sixes and sometimes you're going to roll ones, but you can play around it a bit. However, sometimes you are at the mercy of your cards and you need to learn that and you can reduce that by depth and skill and being better at the game. Um, so I will say there is a lot of depth available to KO that kind of balances out a lot of the negatives. So if you were interested in KO, I feel like the depth that's there could make it appealing to you. However, for all of the problems that I've said in terms of the discarding and the non-blocks and the random rolling and stuff like that, it does make it hard to recommend KO and, and also Brutes in general to new players. A lot of people I know who've picked up Brute have regretted it, even though they loved the aesthetic of the class, just because they didn't really like the, the dice rolling or they went to a tournament and they couldn't consistently roll their dice well over six or seven rounds, which meant they lost. It kind of depends what your goal is in Fab. So if your goal is to be a competitive player, then and you do need to think hard about whether Brute is going to be the right one for you, whether it's going to be consistent in the ways you need it to be. If you just want to go and play casually every week and you enjoy rolling dice and having a bit of an extra flair into your games with a bit of randomness, then actually maybe you could add an extra star here. And I think KO, KO would not be something that's difficult for you to understand, but optimizing it might take you a while. And I think that's the conclusion on that. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. As always, there are more videos in this series. Um, we've got the heavy hitters up ones up when I'm uploading this, but the other ones are coming along shortly. There's just old videos that need to be updated with new heroes. Um, so look to those in the playlist if that's something you're interested in. If you like this video, do give me a like and subscribe. I am a content creator. I am fueled by adoration. If there are any questions that we haven't answered, please just drop them in the comments and we'll try and get back to you. Um, and that's it, really. Thank you all for listening and have a good one.